Welcome back. This is a huge video. Very important, crucial to understanding box control, some shadow studies we did. I'll explain what that is in a moment. Links will be in the description for angles 101, angles 201, and angles 301, as well as our detailed experimental notes and results. So I think that's important. You can scroll down there and get your Google Docs and you can see exactly what we did. Some pretty illuminating information which you're going to see. Some of the stuff you're seeing today, you'll have never seen before as far as measurements, but you know what's old? Box control's old. Angle ropes, that's old. When I was a kid 14 years old, like 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, whatever that is, I had Marv Edwards and Dave Dryden come to Strathroy to show me the angle ropes and the box control. So it's not a Swedish invention, it's not a Finnish invention, it's an old invention that we've all popularized. Now Swedish people need to get credit for growing the study of it and making it popular again. So let's dive into this and find out how well you understand box control today at Future Pro University. We've all heard of box control. Lately the Swedish coaches have made it a big deal and it is a big deal because as a goaltender, you have to conceptualize and understand the three-dimensional shooting space a shooter has. Whether you're a beer leaguer, nine-year-old, NHLer, you need to know this stuff. Today, we're gonna break it down for you so you can clearly understand box control, but we're going a step further. We're actually gonna quantify the available net on the different angles right down to the square inch. So you're gonna know real numbers, not just generic, challenge, retreat, whatever, you cover this much net. We're gonna spell it out for you in exact numbers. So let's go. All right, so the first setup we got is basically the puck in the most dangerous place on the ice, and that would be the slot. And you can see the rope going up to the crossbar and down to the puck. And as a goaltender, it's crucial for us to be able to visualize this space. And you can see what the puck sees right here when you're looking at the net. If you shoot it outside those blue ropes, it's going to miss the net. But that's something important for you guys to know because as this puck comes in, you're only concerned with the pucks inside the rope. But let's throw Josh in there. We're going to check a couple things before we get into our measuring. Here we got Josh. How tall are you, Josh? All right. So we see, we see the shooting triangle from here, and we see how far Josh would have to move to touch his gloves from his stance to that, to that post and to that rope. Now, we'll get a little closer look at it. Jump in your stance, Josh, right back deep on the goal line. We can see how much room is available flat on the ice by his feet. And now to touch that rope with his trapper, that's the post, touch the rope with the trapper. We can see how far he has to go. Do that a couple times, Josh. Same thing with the blocker. Got a little bit of a range. Now watch what happens if he gets his butt out to the top of the crease. Now, to move his glove to cover that top corner, he's only got to move a little bit. Same with his blocker. Now if we put him back in the goal line in his butterfly, you can see there's about a foot on either side of him. But if he throws that exact same butterfly at the top of the crease, and extends as far as he can with his feet, he's really pretty much got most of the bottom of the net covered. We can also see armpit holes here. And one thing to bear in mind is this, watch. There's a straight line that goes right across there. And anything above that is not going in the net. So theoretically right now, if Josh got hit in the head, that puck is going over the net. Now what I've done, I've created a little frame to illustrate the size of the box that's available that the goalie has to protect if they're out at the top of the crease. But here's where things get different. What I want to do is I want to measure this so I know what percentage the net has now gotten when we're out here. So obviously the, the slot is a super dangerous place for guys that want to score. Once we get over the face-off dot, the geometric shape that's available changes. It's much thinner including going over to the goal line where it gets to be very thin. But right now here, we're gonna measure at some point to see how much net's available compared to in the slot 
if you have the same depth off the goal line when you're on the poor angle. Another thing to notice if you come along with me, Josh, is we've got the short side where they can shoot it a lot higher and have it go in, but if they shoot on this angle over there, it's gonna be way over the net. So it's important for us to understand the aerial angle and making sure the short side is covered. All right, from the face-off dot, we can see this triangle's got substantially more thin. And if we look at Josh back on the goal line, you can see how much available net there is. Not much. He really doesn't even have to move his glove anything to cover that top corner. Now, if he comes out to the top of the crease, we can see how much net he makes disappear as well. And in many cases, when you come out this far, your glove's not even in that shooting space. A couple things as well. Let's look what happens if Josh makes a mistake of not being square to the puck deep on the goal line. So if you get down on the goal line and you're not square to the puck, your chest is square to center, hug the post and move your body to the middle a little bit but still stay square to center ice. There's lots of room there. Now, same thing, if he goes down on the RVH there and you got a guy in the poor angle in this face-off dot area, he's got lots of room to pump it over you. That's why you should only ever be in the RVH when you're actually guys a puck length away. So let's watch a couple things. Go back square in the middle, right on the goal line and drop in your butterfly. So now the whole bottom part of the net's covered even if he doesn't challenge at all. And that's why when you're on a poor angle shot goalies, you should constrain your flare, make your butterfly not quite as wide. So if he tucks his feet underneath his butt and shimmies up a little bit, even with a tight butterfly, he's got the whole bottom of the net covered. That's why sometimes if a guy pushes a puck wide on you, you reach out with your foot, you serve up a rebound bat into the slot. So make sure you're only having your butterfly match the shooting triangle. Another thing we notice here is this rope over here is much taller than the one on the glove side. So we have to make sure we understand the short side is a lot more lucrative target for them to hit. All right, so now we've got my measuring apparatus out at the top of the crease to see how much net's available when you challenge to the top of the crease. So Josh, let's get our measurements here. All right, got my pink lines to verify the measurements we took on the ice. We got the face-off dot over there where the gray tape is. We got my measurement jig here. And obviously all my recording spots. The crease is six feet. I put a little dotted thing there so you can see it. Now, I think the money shot is going to be this, where, just like on the ice, when you're looking down these ropes at waist high, it looks like my jig is leaving your room over the top of the net. But you'll watch what happens when I bring her down to ice level, completely eclipses the net. So it's important to understand with the box control that that horizontal bar is never horizontal unless the puck is coming from the dead middle of the ice. The deeper it goes into the corner, the more that horizontal bar will drop. And at the end of the day, this is what we gotta protect that little mini stick net there on a poor angle shot from the face off dot. All right, here we got poor angle. And really, the net right here is only 18 inches wide. I mean, I don't know how somebody gets scored on on an 18 inch net from right over there, which is why I never understood why guys are making this harder than it needs to be by RVHing on a puck over here. So we visualize this angle from right here. There's hardly any net to shoot at. Josh, let's have you jump in there. Try not to touch my ropes. Because we're gonna, this puck right here we've placed, we've got it eight feet off the goal line. And I would guesstimate about 30 feet away from the net where a lot of people make the mistake to RVH on. So let's take a look at Josh when he sneaks in there without touching my lines. It's so small, he can hardly even fit in there. So, just go old school for a second. 
I'm not suggesting you do this, but put both your feet together like your old table hockey goalie. <laughs> That's almost all covered. You couldn't even score on it. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that, but it's basically all covered. At the end of the day, you don't even have to get off the goal line from over there. But typically what happens, guys, you can't be standing with your legs together. That's not we play the way we play goal anymore. So let's see what happens if you RVH with your, your, your body flat. That's what's showing how much is available. But here's the other issue. If you RVH, you're over covering something. They can still pop it up over your shoulder right here or by your head. The difference is your glove, your pad, they're outside the shooting triangle. And if I'm a smart shooter, I'm saying, you know what? I'm gonna bounce it off there and cause a slot rebound. So on a poor angle, just stay up on your feet, maybe do a little bit of an overlap. Try an overlap here where you put your left foot over here and your right foot over top. So stand up, it can be hard. And just put one foot outside the post, one foot there. So now we see, realistically, all you have to worry about is top shelves covered. And even when he butterflies, there's absolutely no room there. So goalies, poor angle shots below the dot, Play a little bit of overlap if you don't have any backdoor threats. Close up and drop your gloves. Let's measure how big this actually is from this angle. Everybody calls this box control, but in reality, it's irregularly shaped polygon. Polygon, polygon, whatever, we got it. But take a close look here on the poor angle. Look at the angle on that top bar. If you put it over this bar, it goes over the net. This is why it's important to understand the short side angle is the one that's easier for them to hit. And you can see, I'm gonna to try to drag this camera right along in the middle here, and we'll see what happens when we walk it up. You can sort of see here how that line on the left, short side, is much easier for them to hit. So goalies on the poor angle, we got about an 18 inch box, basically the equivalent of a mini stick net. You're getting scored on from over there, eight feet off the goal line on a gapped puck. That's your fault. All right, now I'm doing the measurement from a poor angle shot, about 20 feet away from the net and about eight feet off the goal line. The crack in the concrete here is eight feet from where that net is um, depth wise. So one thing you notice on that poor angle, my little box to measure. Look at the angle on that top bar. The more the angle gets shallower, closer to the goal line, that really tilts. And there's a dramatic difference and you'll see the measurements here. And realistically, how small that box is. And you can really see here now on that poor angle shot with the puck eight feet off the goal line, not that you'd ever challenge this far, but Look at the size and shape of that box. Pretty small. It's not a very big net to be protecting. It's amazing how that horizontal bar now has got a dramatic tilt to it. Let's take a look at the measurements. In the intro, I talked about shadow studies. What does shadows have to do with being a goaltender? Well, for argument's sake, the light travels in straight lines. The puck actually travels in straight lines. There's gonna be some dip to it depending on the speed of the shot, but for the purposes of our study and growing our understanding, you don't need to worry about any drop of the puck. We're not talking about muffins that are flipped in that are an arc like a three-point shot. We're talking about hard, hot shots that do travel in straight lines. And what shadow work is, is studying what the shadows created behind you when we have a bright light source from a projector right at the puck level with what the puck eye sees. We're gonna talk about things, how your shadow changes depending on the angle, how your shadow reveals armpit holes and your inability to deny access, which is possible if you have a lot of armpit holes. We're also gonna look at many different things related to the shadow. What happens when you're in the RVH? What happens if you're not square? What happens if you hold your ground and don't back in as the guy challenges it and why that's an important topic? We're gonna to give you some great visuals today on the shadow studies and I guarantee you, you've never seen this stuff before. got going here, you got a little projector mounted at ice level, and pucks basically fly in straight lines. And uh, the shadow that you create is basically how much net you're covering. So what I want you to do to start off, we're going to go on the center angle, which is where this camera is right now, or sorry, the projector. Put your butt right back on the goal line, like so back right up to the garage door there. 
and get in your goalie crouch. We can see that shadow behind you and anywhere that's lit up is basically going to be places where people could score. And for instance, if you have your glove off to the side like that, you cover even more net. So let's come out about two steps. Right there. Now your shadow's getting bigger. And let's come to the top of the crease. And you're even bigger. But I want you to do something now, Mace. Turn around right where we are and look 180 degrees. Turn around and face into the net now. Now take a look at your shadow. Get in your stance. See, if I hit you in the head right now, that puck's not going in the net. It's going over the net. Now rotate your glove down to the side a little bit. See how it's filling in the crease or the top corner there? That's important for you to know. Now let's go back to the uh, goal line again and turn around and face the camera. And we're going to repeat the same thing. Go down in your butterfly now. Anyways, we can see how much room's by his feet, maybe about a foot either side. Now just sort of waddle up a little bit to mid-crease, bring the butterfly. Get that pads flared out, nice. And I go right to the top of the crease now. And we can sort of see the changes that are involved that. Now just for your own visual, I want you to turn around and look. Do 180 degrees right there. And turn around and look like what the puck sees when you're in the butterfly. Now show me a closed butterfly. You put your armpits down. And then an active butterfly where you've got your gloves out in front of you. Interesting, eh, to see that? All right. We're going to switch now. So watch what we got now. We're going to bring my little projector dolly over here. And I've got her marked out where the face-off dot is. And this is where the face-off dot is. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Put your butt back on the goal line and get right in the middle of the net. Move a little bit to your left. So you're lined up on that angle. All right, now come out just a little bit. A little bit more. And right to the top of that crease there, that little red thing there. Now, same experiment. I want you to turn around and look behind you. So you can see the size of the shot you're making on that poor angle. So, let's see, get in your crouch. Now start walking a little bit closer to the goal line. Get a little bit less, get right up close to the garage. So now you can see how much room's available. Now let's turn around and put you right back on the goal line. Go down in your butterfly right there. All right, creep out a little bit to the mid crease. And top of the crease. All right, now turn right there, 180 degrees, look into the net. And move a little bit to the left, to your left. There, show me a closed butterfly. Nice, so the only way they could score on you now technically is just around your body. You see that shape you're making there? And if you don't even move a muscle, could they score on you flat on the ice, Mace? It's all covered. All right. Let's watch this. Turn around. Now we're gonna go do the poor angle. Where a lot of kids get caught going in the RVH. And that poor angle we have, we did our ropes, we put this eight feet right here. So, let's face that. And put your foot, your right foot right on the post area there and square up to that light. And we see right here, and dad can even see it, you almost got the whole net covered with you right back on the goal line. Now, come on out to where the top of that crease would be. Right at that, keep coming out a little bit further. And a little bit more to your right, just a hair more. Do you see what's happening there, Dad? A lot of his shadow isn't even covering any of the net anymore. It's above the crossbar. Let's go back to the post and go on a, a nice butterfly, nice and tight there. Okay, both knees down, yeah, excellent. Now let's creep out to the top of the crease. You can see, just move a little bit to your right now. A little bit more, a little bit more. And closed butterfly, no arm position. Almost completely covered from over there. So turn around right where we are and look at the net so you can see how much net is covered. Move over to your blocker side a little bit, a little bit more. 
and close up your armpits. You almost got the entire net covered. Isn't that cool? There's no way a puck could go in from over there if you just did that same butterfly right there. Now let's try something. It's going to be hard because it's not a regulation net, but go to that right post again and face the poor angle and try to get in the RVH position. Remember what the RVH is? So you got that one right leg underneath you, yeah? And you can see, Dad, we got a little bit of room in his one armpit hole and a little bit above his head. Now, great job, kiddo. Thanks for helping out today, man. That's all it is. Hollywood, baby. Good job. All right, look at my ham and egg little net on the angle. Close post, it's called the short side. Far post, far side. We were always taught when we were playing pro hockey, you never want to give up a goal on the short side. Called it the American League side because they'd send you back to American League. Now, there's some physics and some geometry behind that, and I want to illustrate that now for you. So let's take a look at my little jig I built here. I got a little laser pointer on a, a Gobi tripod where we can move it completely level. And I want you to see something neat here. Now, if you shoot at the short side angle here, and you get a certain angle of elevation that allows that puck to go on the short side. If you use that same angle of elevation to the far side, the puck ends up going a foot over the net. I haven't done anything to the tripod, it's just swinging level here but you have a much higher angle for the aerial angle on the short side than the far side. And if you extrapolate it out by moving this to the far side, it shows you that same angle of elevation is gonna be a foot over the net. So as goaltenders, we gotta be smart. Do not let a guy score on the short side. Make him go to the far side. Come on in the net. Now, earlier, we had Mason in, and you're an adult goalie. How tall are you off the ice? 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five nine. And so you can imagine if we got Pecorini, how this whole circumstance even changes more. So let's put your butt right back on the goal line in the middle of the net, and jump in your stance. You can see, basically, just from your shoulders and head are above the, the crease, or sorry, the crossbar. Now, if you come mid-crease, you can see our shadow's getting bigger. The tip of your glove is just starting to go over the net. And then let's go to the top of the crease and get a sense at your height what the actual puck sees since they fly in straight lines. Now just for your own edification, turn 180 degrees right where you are and face into the net in your stance. So take a look at what you covered. Now creep in there to mid crease. And clearly, anything that's lit up, the puck could hit. So let's put you back in the middle of the crease facing the camera again, right? And let's go into the butterfly position. Okay, let's go active gloves and let's go closed gloves. Now, same, repeat that at the top of the crease. And closed gloves. And just for your own you just turn around and see what that looks like. So you got yourself at the top of the crease. In butterfly position, you can see your holes. And now close your gloves. And just, just crawl ahead a little bit to mid crease. Uh, and armpits closed. And really the only way they're gonna score is outside your body, or maybe sneak one there through the five hole. And you can see just by pinching your knees, seal that right up. So let's bounce over. And face the face off dot, which for our purposes is going to be right over here. And what we'll do is we'll bring the projector over to that dot. Okay, you're going to need to move a little bit to your blocker side to get in the middle of that. There you go. And so you're basically back on the goal line, getting your stance. And let's do a butterfly right there. And close butterfly. All right. Now let's stand up and get to the top of that crease. Normal stance. And butterfly. 
Excellent. And just, again, for your own purposes, turn around and repeat that. You're looking right in the net. And then your butterfly, arms pits down. And then just go back a little bit deep in the net and then you can see the difference. There's a good idea of how much net you're actually covering. Now, let's go over and we're gonna change to our final angle, which is the third angle for our, our purposes. This is eight feet off the goal line. And we got a lot of goalies getting burned on pucks from right here in the NHL. And playing a little bit of an overlap. It's interesting to see what the shadows created when you do that. Now butterfly from right there on the four angle. And pinch your armpits. Nice. Now, I want you to go back as close as you get to the post with our dinky little setup here. Make a little RVH so you can see what the RVH looks like for the net covered. Excellent job, Josh. We got one last thing we want to demonstrate and it's called holding your ground. So obviously on a breakaway, you're gonna challenge and you're gonna retreat. And when a guy comes in who might deke, he might wanna back up a little bit to get momentum. But I wanna show you something. If you get out to the top of the crease and we know the guy's gotta shoot and you don't start backing in, by you simply holding your ground, as this comes in, the shadow behind you gets significantly bigger, bigger, bigger. And what that means is by you not backing up, you make the available net for the shooter much smaller by not giving in and retreating and the guy's cutting in by holding your ground. Thanks a lot, Josh, for showing up out to the Future Pro Studio. Thank you. See you, man.